series, this Unequally Yoked series, uh, which I'm concluding. Um, the first video about with it was what the Bible says about unequally yoked marriage to begin with. Willfully marrying someone that's not a believer and also what happens when you are married to an unbeliever and you're an unbeliever and then suddenly you're saved. Okay. Um, now, real quick, if you thought you were saved and you still married an unbeliever, um, you were still not saved when you married that unbeliever. So that's why it happened in a way. You didn't have that foresight, you know, because you were not born again. When you're not born again, you can't see things the way born again can see. Born again people can see. So anyway, it's not a, it's not like you're responsible, you know, it's not like you know what you did, you know. Okay, so anyway, that was the first video, and then the second video was my testimony, kind of my story in general, about when I was saved and what happened in the marriage. And then the third video was tips and advice on how to survive it, how what you can do to get your husband to look, you know, at you better. Uh, if you're going through that situation, most people that I have spoken to in this situation do suffer persecution from their spouses. You know, even when it's not really that mean or rude and it's just a little bit like a joke behind the scenes or like a, or maybe they're ignore they're just ignoring you or anything. It, it, there's persecution there, so that's why it's a t it's, it's people most most women that are in this situation it's agony. Okay, because you cannot have fellowship with darkness, and it's in it, it can be an agonizing uh, relationship when you don't see eye to eye on the most important thing in the world. Okay, <laughs> so that's why it feels like that. So I didn't even think of this until after I listened to all my videos and put them together. What about you? What about the woman? What, uh, what about the, the wife or husband? What about the spouse, the same spouse? What can they do for themselves to help them? You know, I, I went on a lot about what you can do for the husband, uh, what you can do for the unbelieving spouse, you know, that you need to do your responsibilities as a Christian spouse. Okay. But I didn't really go over what, what about you? Because you're the one that's suffering. They're not suffering. They might be suffering in different ways, you know, and and because they're lost, you know. But you're suffering for Christ. Okay? So let's talk about that for a minute. You're actually suffering for Jesus Christ in a relationship like this. Uh, if you're, get, you're getting persecuted by your closest ally, your best friend, uh, your mate, your soulmate, uh, your, the person you made a covenant with to love for the rest of your life uh, and take care of and everything. And God values all of that. And God, that is very important to God. Unless God leads that person to leave you, which I don't think God would lead that person to leave you unless that person's just not going to get saved or it's this bad match for you and if God wants you to do something else, you know, that happens. But I went over that in the second video, or the first video I went over that. If they leave, they leave. Don't, you can try to, you know, mend it, but, but it's, it's, it seems to me that God wants it that way if that's what happens, you know? So, it's for your own good, maybe, is what I'm trying to tell you. So, how do you cope with you? What do you need to know? Because I've learned this the hard way, and the Holy Spirit has taught me this. And I can literally tell you what the Holy Spirit has taught me. You are going to need to read your Bible a lot. You're going to have to be strong in your faith and read and learn the Bible. You're going to need to be prepared for when God puts it on your spouse's heart to ask a question. Okay? He might come out of nowhere asking you some question and if you have no idea what the Bible says on that matter, you better find out quickly 
Or you better know. Okay, so study your Bible. Get strong in the word of the, in the knowledge of God. Pray for the gift of knowledge. You're also going to need, I would ask you to pray for a strong gift of discernment. Not just your typical Christian discernment, but real heavy duty discernment. Because you're going to have bad spirits coming through your spouse. And you're going to need to know when those are bad spirits and when God's speaking through. Because sometimes the Holy Spirit will speak through. Okay, even though that person's not saved, it's still your, if you're the wife, that, that's still your husband. And he's still the head. Okay, so, um, God will still use him. Okay, so, I'm just letting you know, that's just, just, I've seen it. I've been it, I've lived it. I know what, I, what I'm talking about. Um, let me tell you an example. <laughs> One day... My husband said to me, and this was years ago, I was defending the Bible because he was attacking it. And it wasn't one of those submission days. It was one of those days where you got to stand up for, the, for your father in heaven and tell him, and I had to tell him, hey, that book is real. That book's alive. That book is real. Everything in that book has hap is happening now. Um, you know, I was like, I was defending the Bible and he says to me, well, if it's so important to you, how come you haven't read it all? Well, read it, finish reading it. And I knew that wasn't my husband talking. Okay. Cause he was just attacking it. Why would he tell me that? You know, why would he encourage me to finish reading it? I knew God had spoken through him to finish reading it. That was like, almost like a command. Okay, so that's what that's just an example. Uh, so learn discernment because you're going to need it. Another thing you can do for yourself is you put on your armor. Learn all about the armor of God and literally put it on. Like in the, I don't do this every day. I forget all the time, but I try to remember, and when I remember, I do. All right. So what else can you do? You're gonna need to be praying a lot more than you've ever prayed. It's just, it's just you're, you're like, I need to talk about something in a minute. Hold on, it's coming to my head right now. But okay, hold on. Um, pray without ceasing will mean a lot to you because that's like your number one prayer um, for your life, for your, for your life that you're living, is that your, your, your mate, your, your, your spouse gets saved. They pray for God to warm their heart. For them to see, uh, open their eyes a little and see that you're different, you know. And that's another thing. Um, you have to work on you. you got to work on you way more than you pay attention to him. Way more than you pay attention to his issues. You have to work on you. Um, you got to be the example. You have got to be patient and kind and gentle and, and put up with it. I mean, put up with it. You know, when it gets to be ridiculous, then you can say something. But every little thing, forget it. Don't even nag. Don't even bother bringing up every little thing that drives you crazy. Okay? Because it doesn't matter. They're not going to see it. Okay? So, I mean, when it comes to just disrespect and stuff and, and this whole attitude, I don't have to take this, you know, and all that stuff. That's earthly stuff. That's worldly stuff. We are to, we turn the other cheek and let them smack us. You know, that is just how it goes for us Christians. You know, this is not, this is a very serious matter. Your spouse is unforgiven. Your spouse is condemned already. If they die tomorrow, they wake up in hell. And they, they're not going to be saved because you were saved. It's very crucial. You'll never see them again. You know, that's why you cannot be nitpicking and nagging on stupid stuff. Believe me, it has to be very significant to even bring up. And you're going to learn that over time, and it takes practice to let go, let go, let go, let go, let go, because they are in trouble already. And I do know that God does set them apart and begins to work on them, but I don't know why he takes so long. It's just, he's, he calls everyone to repent, and they have to repent. 
And if they're too proud to repent and they can't see their error and they don't think they're doing anything wrong, they're never going to repent. You know, so he has to break them to get to, get to that point. And you're going to have to be the support system for when this is going on. So you can help yourself by putting on your armor, by being prayed up and praying all the time and being strong in the word of God, studying the Bible, reading the Bible. You got to make a routine out of your life where you're doing all these things, um, where you're getting all of this done because you're just going to need to do that. Another thing to help you is to find a woman's group somehow. Not a secular one, but a Christian woman's group. Um, a ladies Bible study. You're going to have to get your kids, if you have children, involved in a church. Find the best Bible-based church you can find. I advise you stay away from specific denominations that do not have a born-again understanding. You know, any denomination that does infant baptism and any denomination that uh, is emotional, like everything's emotion and stirred up, uh, stay away from that stuff. Okay, those are the two th best things I can tell you without going into detail too much. Um, you can look at my other videos to find what I don't like and what I say is wrong and what God says, has shown me is wrong. But, um, find a support system that you can go and get out of the house and get away from him, the spouse, you know. Um, and let him see that. Let him see that you go to church. Let him see that you go to extracurricular church activities. Not just church on Sunday, but you go on Wednesday nights, and you go on Tuesday mornings, or you go wherever, whenever you have, you can do it. Okay? Show him that you read the Bible. Read the Bible to where he knows you read the Bible. Um, you know, these are for you. This will all keep you, all of this will keep you stronger and help you get through it. Um, don't gossip about him your friends. Don't vent it out too much. You're going to need to talk to someone here and there, but don't make it a habit. Because that's wrong. That's you got to make sure you know what you're supposed to be like. You are responsible for you. You are not responsible for him. You are not responsible for what he decides. Just make sure he sees the light in you and the presence in you. And you need to see it yourself. You need to see your own fruits. Um, just last night, my husband was upset with me because I don't complain anymore. Okay? Misery loves company. Now, whether your spouse is miserable or not or too happy about nothing because unsaved there's nothing to be happy about but these people find earthly things to be happy about um he was upset with me because I don't complain anymore about anything he's the only one that complains he complains about this and that and this and that it's absolutely wrenching to hear when he complains about stuff because it's like there's no great there's no gratitude He's not thankful for anything. You know, when it comes down to it, even when he gets what he wants, he's not thankful for it. And that's just a symptom of being lost. You know, being a brat, a world brat, is just something is just something that lost people have. And it's just... Um, he was upset that I don't complain. I don't join him in the complaining anymore. When he's complaining and venting about things, I, I stay quiet. You know, every now and then I might say something, but very, very, not very much at all anymore. I just stay quiet and let him do the complaining. I'm not the same anymore. I don't do that anymore. God says don't complain about things and be content in every situation, which is not easy to do. But I just withdraw myself from the complaining. And when he starts venting and going on and on and on, I leave the I don't want to hear the complaining and the negativity because I know 
where he is. I know where he is, I know what's, where he's coming from, and I know what's happening, and I know a lot of things he doesn't know, because I have eyes to see and ears to hear, and I have the knowledge of the Bible on my side, and I can figure out, figure out what's going on, and I can see demons, and I can see all this stuff, so it's, so it's like when you, I don't want to hear it, and I don't want to be a part of it, and I don't need that energy, okay, it's enough, I have enough to deal with, so he was upset at me that I don't complain anymore. What has happened to me? I don't complain anymore. I'm never upset about anything. I'm like, I'm upset all the time. What are you talking about? I'm never upset. But he's like, you're never upset about anything. Nothing ever rattles you anymore. Nothing, you don't complain anymore. And he was, he was feeling left out. He was feeling alone. Okay? He was feeling like his other half isn't there. He's starting to feel, because I have someone, I have people praying for him, and I have a person right now, a very uh, smart woman, um, Christian woman, pray, that helped me with something, with a personal uh, issue with my husband, a health issue with my, that my husband has. And she's been praying, okay, and I can literally tell she's praying because I can see in just a week some differences. He's starting to feel the isolation. He's starting to feel he's not on the same page as me. He's starting to feel that he's losing something. He's starting to feel like something's not right. Something is wrong with him. He's starting to feel an insecurity. And I know it's his soul. I know what it is. But he's starting to feel it. So now he's, he's upset that I'm not, his, I'm not being his company in his misery. I'm not being his... Um, source of someone to complain with. He knows I don't like the complaining, so now he can't complain as much. And he's a, he's want, he's wondering why I don't get upset over things that I used to get upset about. Why I don't curse anymore. Why I don't... He's like actually starting to notice. Okay, so it's it's those prayers that that woman's doing, plus my prayers, is starting to do something. So I'm just telling you, keep the faith. Keep the faith and keep praying and keep praying and keep praying. Okay? I heard a pastor say yesterday when I was watching a study on um, those... It's a certain denomination that tells you that if you're not getting what you want out of your prayers, your faith is not strong enough, you're not doing it right, you're not having enough faith, and they teach you to stop praying and just have faith, they literally teach you to stop praying. Well, God says pray without ceasing. And be and be anxious for nothing and pray about everything. Okay, so God wants us leaning on Him on everything. Going to Him on everything. That's what He wants, no matter what is going on in our lives. Even when everything's great, He wants us leaning on Him. Okay, that's why a lot of people don't have it so good. Because he wants you, if you have it good, you, you start to go out of fellowship with him. Your relationship starts to go more worldly. And he has to pull you back in and bring you through some more heartache to keep you close to him. He wants you close to him. So if it takes you having to go through a lot to stay close to him, that's why you're going through a lot. Because you need that to stay close. If you don't have that, you kind of veer away. So learn how to have the have things going well and you're still close to him. If you can show God that when your things are going well and you're still close to him, things will continue to go well. I'm just telling you, until there's some, some something else you have to learn. And sometimes it's an attack of the devil. Sometimes it's not an attack of the devil. Okay, so you got to learn discernment and learn which is what. And um, here I am rambling again, but I was just trying to help you figure out a way to help yourself stay strong, because you have to stay strong, because you are now the head. Even though your husband is still the head, in the order of how God created the marriage and how God created the family, he's still the head, you still submit to him, but in reality, spiritually, you are the head, okay? And your husband, or, or your spiritual husband, is the bridegroom which is Jesus, and you submit to Jesus before you submit to your husband. And that is the natural, that is the, um, not natural, but that is the spiritual order. God wants the married couple to submit to him together. And then they, the, the wife submits to the husband, and then the children come next. And, it, you know, 
but but in the beginning, the God, in the way it goes, the husband and wife is supposed to submit to Jesus together. Now you don't have that togetherness right now. You don't have. You're alone. It's just you. So you still have to submit to Jesus. Okay. So that is just what I'm saying here. Um, you have to submit to God still, and you're the only one doing that because your spouse isn't doing that. You're alone in it. And you're going to have to remain that way until God moves the heavens and the stars and the mountains to get your husband saved. Okay, and that might be ugly. I mean, that might come at you at, a, at a, where he gets hurt or something happens or an illness or an accident or something that pulls him in to get his attention. That It can go that way. Or... Just keep praying that his heart warms and that when he does do some kind of sin, he notices it's a sin, you know, and notices that he's not a good person, that he needs a savior. You know, you got, or hears the word of God, pray that he will hear. And oh, oh, play Christian music in your home, play Christian music in your home, not gospel. Okay, because there's a lot going on with the gospel world right now that's not good. Forget the gospel and just Christian music, hymns, um... You know, play that in your home. Let them hear it. Okay? Play it in your car if you're allowed to. I don't, I'm not allowed to play it in my car when my husband's in the car. Can't. He won't listen to it. But I can play it in the house, and he has to hear it once in a while when he's coming up and down the stairs or coming in and out. Okay? So, I'm just letting him play Christian music. It also keeps the demons at bay. It keeps the demons at bay. They don't like it. And, um, bind and loose. And that's another video I'll be making one day, a bind and loose video. But um, your bind and loose will also help you um, in your prayer, uh, spiritual warfare. Because you're going to go through spiritual warfare, and that's another video. I can't do all that right now. So, I hope this helped you. Um, if it didn't, tell me. I'll redo it. <laughs> I kind of rushed it because I'm out doing things right now, and i got a, too many things happening in the brain. So, um, but I wanted to get this series done, so that concludes the series. I hope it helped somebody, and if you know anyone that has an unequally yoked spouse, send this to them, even if they, it was their total uh, mistake of getting married to an unbeliever and they were a believer, they still need this information. And if they have a backsliding husband, they might be able to use this information, because it's, it's not the same, but it's kind of, it can be, it can look the same. So... Oh, I forgot to talk about something again. I hate when I do that. I told you, I, I, I should have just waited until I had more time to focus. I'll have to throw this in. I remember saying, okay, don't forget that, and don't forget that, and of course it slipped. <clears throat> One part I have to say. Flesh compromised. Remember this. Okay, you are a believer and your husband's an unbeliever. Okay, well, however it happened. Forget that for now. Um... Divorce is not an option, okay? Separating is not an option. Okay, I already went over all that. Now, this is what you need to understand. You two are one flesh. Two of you join together and are one flesh. So I have to tell you this. Your flesh, your flesh, is compromised by his flesh, okay? What he does in his flesh, his sins, he sins spiritually and fleshly. So his spiritual sins might not affect you. They might, the results might affect you, but they might not affect you. But his fleshly sins, which is which is definitely all you know bad, um, and in us too. But I mean, really bad in them, uh, are going to compromise your flesh. You're going to feel those. You're going to feel it. Um, in fact, when he's doing something very wrong in the eyes of God. The Holy Spirit is going to give you an idea of what it might be, or at least make you aware that it's there. Okay, if you really listen to the Holy Spirit, He will tell you, your husband's up to something. Your husband's doing something. You know, pray. You know, it doesn't mean bust them and humiliate them and, and, and find out what it is, but it, it does mean pray. Okay, now sometimes we do go that far and find out something. Okay, but I'm just letting you know. Your flesh is compromised. You are going to have issues. Um, th tendencies, tendencies to sin on something you wouldn't want to sin on. Uh, 
pressure to watch a worldly movie with him you don't want to watch. Um, pressure into something he wants to go do that you know you can't go do or you or you wouldn't go do if he wasn't there, you know. You could live a much holier better life if the if bad influence of the sinner that's, that's that's connected fleshly to you wasn't sinning. Get it? Okay? So his your and this happens in a backsliding relationship as well. Two believers, one's backsliding. Their flesh sin compromises your flesh. And you need more prayer and you need more spiritual warfare and you need more closeness to the Lord uh, and more holiness and more reading your Bible and more praying and more worship to weed that out, to, to stamp that out because it's going to affect you. You are both one flesh. So whatever he does that you might be not aware of or, or you are aware of, whatever flesh he does, even if it's like gluttony, like he overeats and eats all the time and, is, and isn't grateful for food, so he eats like a cow, you're going to start eating more because he's eating more. You understand what I mean? It's that simple, that little of a sin. Okay? If he's lusting on something... Um, you might start to feel some kind of lust out of nowhere. Like, what the heck is this? You know, it's happened to me, you know, and, and, and then you gotta like, what is that? And you gotta like stomp that and get that out because it's coming through him. It's coming through his open door. Do you understand? You know, if you pray, if you keep your prayer up and you keep your armor on and you keep, um... You know, you just keep confessing your sins and keep ask, get, get, getting forgiveness again and again. And I know what you're saying. Oh, but we're, once we're forgiven, we're forgiven. Still, still, when you acknowledge a sin, you need to acknowledge a sin and ask for forgiveness. I don't care if it's the 20th time you've done it. Okay? Um, don't be so naive. Because the, that, that will... Go watch my pride lesson. That's a good idea. Let me just put that in real quick. Let's. Go, if you're going through this unequally ma yoked marriage thing, after you're done with this series, I want you to go listen to the woman's servant, uh, women have, have a servant's heart video, and I want you to go listen to the pride videos. There's two pride lessons. Go listen to those, and once you do all that, I mean, you'll be, you'll be equipped. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about here. The Holy Spirit has shown me how to help people, and I'm doing it, okay? Now, now, if people listen, they listen. If they don't, they don't. That's not, but at least I'm putting it out there. That's all I can do is share my gifts that way to edify the believers uh, that want to listen, okay? So that's just what I'm trying to do. It's my little tiny nugget to show God I did something, and it's nothing, okay? It's nothing, and I know it's nothing. So, um, I'm just letting you know that your flesh is compromised by his flesh. Okay? Now, if he was saved, then spiritually you're both forgiven. Spiritually you're stronger. Both of you submit to the Lord. Both of you pray together. Both of you go to church together. Both of you worship together. Both of you have... He, can, he could learn his duties as a godly husband. And you could learn your duties as a godly wife. And things would be a lot better. A lot better. And if you're in a saved marriage... Hey, both of you are saved and that's not going on in your marriage then you have a backslidden partner okay and if you have if you have a backslidden partner again same thing his flesh is going to compromise your flesh you are going to have issues you shouldn't even need to have because your leadership is not up to par his i mean his leadership is not up to par okay now in an unequally yoked marriage it's uh, it's fellowship with darkness which doesn't work and there's no godly leadership whatsoever. You can it's only you and God and he's there like a third wheel in the marriage, okay? It sucks. I'm just saying how it looks. Okay? But it's still a marriage and it's still what you need and you still need to know your parts. Okay? But if you're in a backslidden marriage, your flesh is being compromised and it's not fair at all because you're both saved and it shouldn't even shouldn't even be going on. That man should be leading more. That man should be crucifying his flesh and dying to himself. And that man should be praying with his wife and taking care of her and, and, and doing his godly husband duties that he is aware of because he is saved. And he has 
the Holy Spirit in him to guide him and comfort him and teach him. And if he's not allowing it to speak through him or he's not allowing it to speak to him and he's not allowing it to happen because he wants to stay in a backslidden state away from Father, away from God, that is bad. That is not fair and that is not right. And you do need to do something about it you do, because you are the wife and you are the helpmate and you need to get your husband back centered again somehow. And that's another video. But I'm just going to, I'll try and research more on that because I'm not familiar with that. I am not in that kind of marriage. I can't speak from experience on that. And I like to speak about things from experience point of view because that I can relate and I can like tell you what I've done and what God has shown me. But on a, that kind of situation, I do not know what it's like to have a saved husband that's not acting like a saved